week six is upon us as we have gotten past the halfway point of the USFL season, the inaugural season of many heights, daring feats, and quite a lot of excellent games as of late. I'm Zach Kyleman, and welcome in to the latest edition of the USFL podcast. Alongside my good buddy, pal, compatriot, the man, the myth, the legend himself, the ref on the other side of the mic, Stefan, like I said, it's halfway through the year. So many things have gone on. The fact that we are even considering that, you know, we're going to be getting a sixth week after our last iteration of football for any spring lovers out there. Only got to five different circumstances, I will mind you, because I have to put that in the disclaimer. Nonetheless, we're, we're getting ever so close. I'm feeling good. You know how good I'm feeling? All this other stuff that we could be talking, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. I, I'm in a good mood. I'm in such a good mood. I'm, I'm joining the Seltzer Club. We got, this is a local one, Carbach, Carbach, local Ooh. Texas brewery, ranch, water, hard seltzer. It's a lime one. I'm usually the lemon guy, but I'll, you know what? It's okay. not, it's not too shabby, but the halfway point, I mean, halfway there. And we got a lot to talk about. We're going to do the mid season review. We got to talk about the games last week, talk about the games next week. Some news about the playoffs and championship. I mean, how could you not feel good? I mean, you mentioned week five. Here's the other marker too. get past week eight. And then we surpass the AAF and it'll, it, I mean, then, then you're going back a long time to find one of these leagues that have made it that far and things are looking on the up and up for season two. So I'm ready to roll. I'm getting signed up all sorts of ways. I, I am too. Uh, and we'll be even talking about details about, you know, the postseason here pretty soon. Some, some things, at least for you folks, if you want to even talk about going out to Canton. They finally got some stuff released. We'll touch on those details in a little bit. Also going to be touching on the fact that uh, none of the teams are winless anymore. Just a little reminder. Congrats to you Pittsburgh fans out there. We'll touch on that game as we go into our recaps later on. And uh, other tidbits and previews and picks. We got all kinds of stuff. It's the USFL podcast. We got to touch everything on your favorite league that you're watching the United States Football League. Before we jump into everything, though, we always have housekeeping things we got to get out of the way for you folks out there. First off, social media. If you haven't followed us on any of our social, what are you waiting for, man? At USFL Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All your favorite socials all the time there. Posting, of course, our episode updates, interviews, which we've gotten back into doing those as of late, by the way. A new one with Jawan Washington from the Tampa Bay Bandits just dropped. Really good conversation. Recommend you check that out. And you can check that out on YouTube, or if you're watching our YouTube channel right now, what are you waiting for? Subscribe, click that bell, because guess what? What does it do, Stefan? It builds morale, my friend. That's exactly right. Building morale, you feel good about it, and we feel great about it, because you can follow along with our show all at the same time. And it gets you going towards a potential chance to win one of those jerseys that they're going to be releasing on the league shop. We are still looking to do that 5K giveaway currently just hanging on creeping up on there on the two and 2.7 K mark on subscribers trying to get to the five K mark. If you keep on hitting the subscribe button, or if you're new to the channel, do that. We hit the five K mark some point and you are going to get a Jersey from us from the USFL shop. We're also doing one that's very relevant to this today's conversation, a giveaway for championship tickets in Canton, Ohio. So if you want to go to the hall of fame village, you want to go to Tom Benson stadium, you want to be there, Maybe meet up with us while you're at it at the game and check out whoever's going to be making it there of the top brass of the USFL, the top teams. You want to see them square off and encapsulate a 4th of July weekend out in the Midwest? Well, we're going to be giving you two tickets if you do the following. And we're going to keep highlighting this as we go along. You got to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So you have to be a subscriber. You got to give us a comment on one of our videos. And you got to follow us on Twitter. We're really big on Twitter. We love our Twitter community out there. Do those three steps. Subscribe to YouTube, comment on a video, follow us on Twitter, and you just might be getting a pair of championship tickets courtesy of us at the USFL podcast. Well, again, we'll repeat those steps at the end of the show. Recommend you stick to that if you have the chance. Because, hey, I've already signed. We're already got our place. We're ready to go. I'm ready. And it, those things dropped this morning when we were recording right mm. now. Come on. Oh, yeah. Come on. You know, you think we were going to get tickets? Oh, we, and we went fancy, too. We got those reserve club, buddy. And I, you know what? Here's the thing. I was telling Zach earlier, again, no curtains. I might even saunter down over to those lower sections just because 
But I like the option. I like the option of having that club bar and more importantly, that club restroom. Less lines, <laughs> less lines there. But I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a hard season's work paying off for everybody. The two teams in there, all the people at Fox that kind of put this together again, very quickly, mind you. And we're having some quality football. And more importantly, us, we made it a full season, almost halfway, at least at this point. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm especially excited for summer stock. You know, so nice. We're doing it twice. We have two giveaways. Now we're doing a second event and it's a two day event. First day, July 2nd, we're meeting up with everybody doing a group Hall of Fame tour at the Hall of oh, Fame. Yeah. So come and join us. We'll have more details on that shortly. But the big one, the one that everybody's looking forward to, July 3rd, Summer Stock. And again, if you can't make it in person, we get it. You can't get to Canton, Ohio. We're also going live on YouTube. So that's another important reason you want to hit that bell. Not only do you exactly. get the morale, you get the reminders when we go live. And I'm telling you, that's going to be one that you won't want to miss. But if you're there in person, we're going to have giveaways. We're going to have guests. We're going to have good times. We're going to have a grill. I mean, sign you up again, weather pending, but I, pending. I, I'm looking forward to it, Zach, especially now it's real. We have tickets again, not in hand. They're virtual. They're virtual. I might go mm-hmm. check out the box office. Not going to lie. Say we'll, we'll say we'll pass them along like that. Don't mm-hmm. worry. We'll DM you. We'll get a hold of you on that. So you know, <laughs> we have our ways. We already done this oh, before. Yeah. We've already done a giveaway in the past. We'll we'll keep. We know how to do this stuff. We're, We're not rookies anymore, We're, right? And you know, thanks for highlighting summer stock, man. I just yeah, you know, I just got to make sure because I mean, hey, it's still for us. We've already had this discussion. No curtains again. It's it's felt like it would be forever that we'd have to do this again. Now it's really kind of. Uh, you know, we're halfway through the season now. So now, now both you and I are going, oh man, preparation already again. Mm. Okay, here we go. Like back into the cycle. Seven weeks, man, <laughs> seven weeks. And I'll be flying into Canton, Ohio. I got to find the close. I think the closest White Castle is an hour from Canton, the opposite direction up from the airport, which is unfortunate. Dang. I might do it. I ain't going to lie. Big Daddy likes his White Castle. And you know what? It's not. It's going to be a while since I'm an hour within a White Castle. So you know what? Thursday night when I fly in, mm, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. You ever been to a Canes, a Raising oh, Canes before? Yes, I, we got them all over the place here. That is my jam, Just sure. dude. Just making sure. I, I they're only they're not. In, there's only a few in Indiana and in Indianapolis. Mm. So like when I go to Ohio, that's where I look for. Drive through Columbus. They got one right there. Go pick it up. There's one place that we do absolutely need need to check out and i'm going to get some of these things listed together and we'll talk about them on the show maybe in the when we get a little bit closer to it there's a coney dog shop that is in canton that looks amazing it looks like my kind of place that is one thing that i'm definitely doing at some point this that weekend and i'm looking i'm a food kind of guy and the worse it is the better i like it Sign me up. You're, kill- <laughs> you're killing me. You are killing me. I, it's going to be a blast. Um, you know what? While we're at it, because we we were going to wait on doing this, but why not? Let's just jump into the playoff and championship ticket mm-hmm. talk. It's the it's the most recent. There's other news pieces that we're going to touch on today, but let's give you some details and run through how this is going to work. So playoff and championship tickets are on sale currently. You can go either through Ticketmaster looking up the USFL. You can go through the Hall of Fame Village's site. Uh, if you go to Pro Football, look up Pro Football Hall of Fame or just look up Hall of Fame Village via your search engine. It's going to be in the events tab. Go down to the United States Football League. You'll be able to click the link to go to Ticketmaster or that Ticketmaster link is in the website for the league, theusfl.com. Just go to their ticket section. So you have multiple ways to go find those. Uh, here's the price layout, though. Just real quick off the bat, and this is not with fees or anything. This is just flat stuff before the end. So... Uh, general mission, they're giving away here for both games. Uh, playoff pass for the 25th, that's Saturday, June 25th. That's going to be $15 for that. And then they started because it's playoffs. Uh, the kid tickets aren't free anymore, but they are still insanely reduced. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's no matter what, for the level of play you're getting, like you're getting the best of the league, all this is still really damn good value. I can't stress that enough. So for adults, $15. Youth general missions now five if you're under 15 for the championship. 
There's reserve club seating, of course, like we talked about for playoffs and championship. For the playoff game, as I continue, that's $30. Youth is 15 for that. The championship, a little bit up. But again, it's a championship. You're going to get the best game possible is in theory. And of course, it's the final setup. They're going to have a ton. They're going to have stuff to do out there. You're going to make it's for 20 bucks. That's for general mission. $20. You get to go to this league's first ever championship. The two best teams in the USFL, probably the two most star loaded teams in the USFL. That's not saying Philadelphia's game there, but I'm just you know, <laughs> star. They're stars. Like that's all I'm yeah. telling you. I'm, so, I'm just, just got to put it out there. You know, 20 bucks gets you in for general mission. Your kid gets in for 10. Then if you go for club, like we're doing, you get forty dollars to do a club seat. Forty dollars to do a club. Good, my guy. You can get nosebleeds in the NFL mm-hmm. that are not even forty. Bucks. Oh, it, yeah. There's some stadiums that there's no. You'll be lucky in some. I'm a Bears fan. They're one of the most expensive tickets in the mm-hmm. NFL. I wish to God I could buy Bears tickets for forty dollars. That's the one. That's <laughs> yeah. the one beautiful part of living in Houston is if I want to go to a Texans game, I can get tickets. I can get them like dirt cheap. And it was just like when I lived in Arizona, you. you know, you go and you scout the teams that suck and the tickets are like, I went to MLB games. I no joke, 75 cents a ticket before, <laughs> but yeah, but then you're stuck watching like the Texans. So that's, that's right. the well, trade. Exactly. <laughs> Modern day Texans is yeah. It's not ideal, you know, uh, but I mean, good for you. I, I know there, there's some seats in the NFL that are still reasonable like that. I'm just saying. There's a lot of them, like 40 bucks for club. That's, and you get the access oh, yeah. to everything like that. You can't go wrong. You know, 20 for your kid. Like it's a great, it's still a great value. Like, especially if you are a diehard football fan, there's going to be plenty. It seems they're coming already. They've said I'm coming out cause I just, I love football, you know, and I'm your, and I'm imagining you're going to see hopefully because it's right in the middle of Pittsburgh and Michigan. I know it's hard to say they're going to play right now in there, but they could, but you hope that those people are interested. I'm saying, yeah, it's half a season. The North, I mean, for Christ's sake, the North is still wide open for that second season. Here's the thing. If either, if, if Pittsburgh or Michigan wins another game, they're tied with Philly. Right? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's how crazy things are right now in the yeah. North, if you yeah. really, really think about it. But it, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. None, nonetheless, you're, these tickets are going to be really darn affordable. Remember, the championship's July 3rd on Sunday. The playoffs are on a Saturday. You really... Got to keep that in mm-hmm. mind. You know, they're trying to, for the championship, trying to stick to the traditional Sunday championship sub that, you know, the NFL has in a way, too. Should be a blast. People have been asking for these tickets for a minute now. Uh, probably the last week or so that started picking mm-hmm. up. People asking, when are these tickets coming to release? Sure enough, the league drops them early this morning as we're recording. And, hey, great. We're locked in. We're ready to go. And we'll be there for summer stock and the like. It's going to be fun. I mean, the the great thing here, too, is I think everybody kind of assumed that you we would have to pay for children moving to Canton just because it's unlike Birmingham, where they're there the whole season. I mean, they they want to recoup some costs while they're in Canton. There's only three games, but two days. But this is still flipping affordable. Again, five dollars for the playoffs for two games. So, I mean, you're kind of looking at two fifty a ki- 250 a ticket for per kid if again if you go to both them but again 15 bucks and even for club seating 15 or 20 yeah. depending uh, either the playoffs or the championship that ain't bad uh like you mentioned no, you know i jokingly talked about yeah i can get cheap tickets for the texans but you were exactly right they are in like section section 600 in the back corner where there's probably like a pole Tom Benson mm-hmm. Stadium is not a very big stadium. There's probably not a bad seat in the house, but you saw it firsthand just like I did in Birmingham with the general admission. You can kind of sit wherever you want. Yeah, you might need exactly. to get there early, right? The, the, it, you know, I don't know if it's going to sell out, but some of those prime spots are going to fill up early, those center spots. But, I mean, if you try or get there early enough, you can get like a third, first to 10th row center field and again, for 20 bucks, because you don't even need club for that, 20 bucks yep. here. Yep. I mean, that's a steal. That's a steal. Right. Now, I hope we see, I, I would love to see the Panthers or the Maulers get in just for that extra uh, maybe fandom that shows up. Just that localized, localized right. appeal. I mean, Pittsburgh's not that far from Canton. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, a, it's really a hop, skip, and jump from Cleveland. I've done it one other time. Like it would be so easy for Maulers fans that are in the city, like those that are diehards that have been watching, going, man, I wish I could go down right. there to just go. 
all right, road trip. You know, that's ain't too, that ain't too no, far. No, no, not you at know, all. The nor- two Northern teams, half your Northern teams, you're hoping to God, maybe one of them gets mm-hmm. in now. If you know, cause otherwise I'm kind of curious, like that's one I'm curious about. People talk about attendance all the time. Like that, that's been like I, the, the amount of discussion on the attendance angle. I I've uh, let's just say, all I'm going to leave you at is I've had my fill of attendance discussion <laughs> for one spring football right. season in my lifetime. Um, so I, I, I know it's going to come up. Uh, Tom Benson is a smaller stadium. Um, it's going to be easier to fill it with a neutral site. Question is, for how much do you come up for a championship? We will find mm-hmm. out is what's going to happen. Still pretty damn good prices. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm going to tell you. I mean, I saw a good amount of people in our Discord say that they already got their tickets. We saw Mm -hmm. at least a a, a good amount of people online on social media, at least that I follow, say that they got their tickets. Well, and, you know, I I think it'll be as good as probably at least the opening week at minimum that we saw. I think especially if the Birmingham team makes the playoffs, I think those those fans are probably invested enough. Like your tailgate group, the thoroughbred group. I mean, yep. if the Stallions make the playoffs, you got to come right, giddy up or bang them. I mean, what is the, what's I mean, the them, thing? What's the buck them? Uh, it's buck buck them. Yeah. How can I forget em. that? Buck them. I'm going to get a message from <laughs> from uh, my buddy Ray down there. He's like, oh, come on. You couldn't get that one right well, blame now. Blame it on me. He, I don't know. No, I'm drinking it's seltzer. <laughs> they're, they're great folks down there. And, and honestly, that's a thing we've talked about when I was down there week four. It was, you know, it was like, you know, there are people that are like, man, I wish it was down here. It's like, hey, I get it. You know, and especially when you're, five and oh mm-hmm. you know and you're the top you're the top brass of the league right now and you know you might be getting might be getting a rematch of week one for crying out loud like we'll talk that in a little bit but you know i think you're gonna get some people there they'll be like i'll find a way oh, yeah. i've already heard i've already had a few people that i've talked to it's like i'll i'll see if i can go yeah you know it's it's still a trek but if they'll find a way to get there they'll try um it should be fun i'm hoping it's like a melting pot of fans that are like why not make this a trip here you know, and we see some of the local flair that maybe we didn't get in Birmingham from outside markets Mm -hmm. that maybe drizzles in. I mean, that's all we hope for, you know, you know, keep building that base. That's another game that can do it possibly, Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's as neutral as you can get. Not even a team is residing in camp. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, there's no tomfoolery or shenanigans there. It's really up to the fans to whoever wants to make it a home team advantage for anybody. Then, then we'll see, we'll see it. it, Mm. I'm, I'm so excited to see it finally play out. Like I said, it's been a while since we got a championship game in a spring football league. So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully next year we have two championships in one, one year between the XFL and the USFL. So I'm looking forward to that as well. In the meantime, though, I got some goodies. We got a little bit of an unboxing here that I want to mm-hmm. show you. Now, we, let me not move too far away from the microphone. So I got okay. the USFL football earlier today now i was actually very surprised with i I was very happy to see it come in like a packaged you a branded usfl box right there there's no joke there yeah they're going custom on yeah so i I saw like i think it was jake henry when he because he he was one of the first to order one and he got it in a branded box i don't know if it was the same one but then I've seen other people since, and they didn't get a branded box. So I was really hoping I got one, and I did. So, but included, so you also get your certificate of authenticity. Oh, dang. Well, let's take a look okay. at this. I'm sorry if this, this paper ruffles too much, but I think I have my microphone set up in a way where it won't have too much problems with it. So, yeah, it looks like a football. It feels like a football. <laughs> fresh from the factory wrapping yeah too. Uh, see i if i knew there was plastic over this i would have actually did this before i thought i was clever getting it with the uh with the the box cutter first on the box well okay this thing you know what no harm no foul no harm no foul mm-hmm. yeah okay you know what it looks nicer than it does in the pictures because this is the part that i wasn't too sure about because this like when right. you look at it online it's more of a mock-up so I couldn't tell if the printing, like how good it was actually going to come off on the ball. But yeah, it came out. I, I think it, you can see it on the camera, too. It's pretty good. Yeah, I, I can see it. It's focusing in. Yeah. And yeah, it's, I mean, standard leather grip pattern, usual football look. Yeah. Um, I mean, star. I mean, the stars obviously have been what I always liked with it. And then uh, 
Yeah, it looks looks solid, man. I'm liking it. Me authentic ball. Yeah, I need to get a little stand ship, of course. Yeah, I need to get one of those little stands. I'll have to ask Seth Lessons who the best stand maker is. I know he probably has go. a good recommendation. He's probably. I think I saw oh, you, what did he say? He had 44 footballs, something like that. Some I, I might man, be wrong. Almost, that almost feels like it's under shooting. Yeah, I could be wrong. I could be could be either way if you know drop it down in the comments or ping me on uh ping me on twitter i'll ping you on twitter because i want to i want to know about this got to put this in the back i'm actually look thinking about yeah. putting a new shelf behind me so i could display all this all these cool goodies i have because you kind of get the vet tracks <laughs> in the corner with the usfl hat but that's it Nobody right cares about my uh view master that's what that's called view master <laughs> so either way you the footballs are a, back a genuine cable yes yeah, genuine cable. Yeah, so they also have. I didn't order one of those, but they also have the like the signature edition. So it's all white. So that might be something if you're planning on going to the game. I'll tell you this: those players will show up on the sidelines and autograph your ball, autograph shirts, hats, whatever you want. So if that's your thing, you might want to pick up one of those white balls before the game. I'm hoping. I'm hoping they sell them at the championship game. I hope we see a little bit more merchandise when it comes to that, but we'll have to see. Right. Well, well, I mean, we've, there's actually, uh, there's a nice, there's a one piece by a league member. I'm going to find that article, but they're already starting the scouting process of, uh, getting things started on how to get the logistics down in Mm -hmm. Canton set up properly. So that is happening currently as of this week, that, and, uh, also the logistics of trying to set up the games at Legion field. Cause remember those are coming up week eight and 10. So the league's going to have to now two weeks out technically, uh, they're going to start considering that, you know, and one thing that was brought up is, you know, protective was built for this. It's built as a modern stadium legion. Mm-hmm. It's not really sure. It's been done in the course, but you know, you got to organize that. So we'll be seeing how that process goes along. Uh, you brought up the store, you know, the ball is great, of course, and something else, and people have been wondering about the jerseys. Actually, that was, uh, it's been a curiosity of some folks in our discord myself included was, uh, what's and yeah. I mean, you have what three. Yep. So people have been saying, okay, what's the status on these things? And I got curious too. I haven't bought one yet because I wasn't sure about, I want to see the quality of it. That, that, that's my thing. I'm, I'm just, a, I'm just a stickler. Where I want to see what it looks like, you know? Uh, but I decide, all right, let's check out and talk about, let's see what customer service says. And sure enough, uh, we got a response. It looks like if you are out there and listening to the show, it looks like the jerseys will be delayed in terms of being sent out. So here's what I got from customer service. Quote, unfortunately, we have encountered an issue that has created an unexpected delay in the creation of your items. The me reference me uh, referencing is in jerseys, which I was asking about your order should ship by the end of May. So at max, you're getting delayed probably two weeks. I don't know what the issue Mm -hmm. is. I, we haven't asked for clarification or anything. I am just, just thought it was something that was interesting because if you go on the site, and people do, you know, people ask about the merch. You know, people love their merch. So, something to keep in mind: if you're ordering a jersey, you might be waiting a little longer. And if you ordered one already, odds are you're waiting longer. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it says pre-order on the shop by the fifteenth, just a heads Only up. Only a couple weeks, unless, and there may be others by now. I don't know, but it looked, or at least I thought I heard. Maybe you were the one that read it, uh, wrote it on Discord. But from what I understand, the Stallions jerseys are sold out. Yes, on the website, they have said they have sold out. You cannot buy a Stallions jersey currently. So, one, probably shouldn't be surprised. I, honestly, I'm glad they sold mm-hmm. out because it means the interest is big enough big enough to where they can do that. Uh, but two, I mean, you know, it means you're waiting on a bunch of pre-orders. To, they probably won't because they won't probably restock until these things are sent right. out at the, at the earliest. So, that's the only thing that's a downside on it. But, hey, you know, it, Birmingham isn't isn't at all saying they aren't interested in this league. They have shown out. So more and more evidence. And I've been there too. You and I have been there a week. I've been there a second week. Like people like this team. Mm. It's getting interest. You know, it's showing out when you're given time. That's the other key angle, by the way, we'll get into that in a little bit with our recaps. One final news piece that did sweep across the league. And this one was a few days ago. That's why we delayed it a little bit. Sands, the most recent stuff. USFL's rosters, they are expanded. Ten, wait, sorry. You have five more people yes. added to the roster. I got a little over <laughs> carry, overkill on that. But if I said ten, people are like, ten? 
55 total players sign me sign me the heck no. up <laughs> um i mean you still should be happy with this though because they're they expanded the rosters for active and inactive in both ways uh the new active roster size went from 38 players to 40 the inactive roster size went from an extra went basically from seven to ten mm-hmm. that's where i got the 10 extra by the way so they added five additional slots um, there's reasons behind it, according to their press release that they sent out to us over the newsroom here. Um, Savan, would you care to yeah. read off the reasoning? Yeah. Here? So essentially to v- provide more opportunity for draftable grade players to join teams pushing for the new league's first ever playoffs, the USFL today announced that the game day active rosters will expand from 38 to 40 players, starting with week six games this weekend. So essentially it's looking forward to the playoffs. Clearly do you want to have some of those teams have a little bit more wiggle room as you get into the playoffs and that championship game, give them a chance to gel because you clearly, you don't want to bring them in a week or two before, before those big games are coming up and they've kind of seen, okay, after about three weeks, that's really about how, how long it takes for these guys to really get into the mix. And this is a big talking point from fans online is they wanted to see these rosters expanded. And I think this is just the first step again, speculation zone here, but I think yes. this is the first step. I think we go into season two and then that expands from 40 to maybe 42 and maybe 45. We'll see. Of course, speculation zone. This isn't based on anything we've heard, but I think this is just the first step for that. And maybe even it jumps to 42 at the beginning of the season and then jumps to 45 halfway through similar, to, similar to what we're seeing here. Um, either way, I, I don't think there was anybody online that was upset by this. I know there's a lot of players at least in my inbox that I've asked, uh, you know, they're, they're happy about it. Guys that are either looking to get into the league guys that weren't drafted, but at least to my understanding, the way that it works, if you were, if they accepted your application, if you were part of that initial draft pool, if you didn't get selected, you should, you should still be in that eligible pool to get picked up uh, as part of this expansion here. That's what I understand. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why that's what I was understanding was the case too. Mm-hmm. It's they they have database to go to, you know, that Jim Pop, his personnel department, you know, or coaches that visit with the personnel department he's running, they can go and do that, you know, and that's the plan. Free agency is open season for that, so you know, it's waivers are a completely different story based on, of course, ranking of the like of play of overall teams. Nonetheless, though. It's a good win. I know there's some people that they want the they want the 53 man. You know, I've seen some people that are like, it's got to be 53. I'm like, it's fair. You know, they did this as a we all know that was a cost cutting mm-hmm. measure. That was to help save a little bit on the league. You know, they started with 45, with 38 active, seven inactive, and what we've what we noticed, many of us have noticed, and us is that the inactive roster basically became the IR or really just to stash maybe extra players. Mm -hmm. Um, It didn't really become a practice squad is what it was supposed to be. So it's, it's a probably a combination speculation zone, but it's a reasonable assumption that not only did you have, of course, fans calling for this because they see injuries or, you know, in the case of like, say a Jeff Fisher, who tried to do a triple threat punter kicker combo Mm -hmm. and completely had it backfire in his face for a loss. Um, Yeah. it, It, Coaches, I'm assuming, also are like, hey, I would like some more slots. I mean, there's injuries that come up. You know, obviously, there's reasons I'm not picking up certain players, you know, and that's what's happening. I mean, again, I referenced Jeff Fisher, but dude picked up a, picked up a dedicated punter and the week before got a dedicated mm-hmm. kicker. So clearly, people can take advantage of that because now you can do specialists properly. You know, Matt Mangle, I, I mean, I feel bad for him being let go, but... You know, I, I'm wondering with Bart Andrews if he just wanted more of a specialized type of player or a different spin on that. He still picked up someone that does both, by the way, mind mm-hmm. you. But that comes into an account. Everyone had a different way of doing this, too. I mean, Bart, <laughs> credit him, he was using someone that was playing receiver yeah. that isn't even a traditional quarterback. He's like, I'm sticking with it until Brian comes back. I'm going, And we're all going, all right, Case better have some good protection and good health in a few weeks. Now, Brian's almost mm-hmm. back. But nonetheless... These are the jugglings you have with this roster size that people have been asking about. 50 does expand it. It helps, helps for a stretch run. And another thing, and I'll, I don't usually, it's funny. I, I, back when we were, you and I are covering XFL and talking, we talk on the side. Mike Florio has been a fascinating case in terms of, uh, 
how he his relationship with spring football. Mm -hmm. He got a great point with at least the in terms of the arms race for players. Mm -hmm. You sign them under contract with extra slots, and if they take the option, they're with the league again right. next year. So all this does as well. It's not only it helps with now. It's also kind of a expansion into the future. Even if you have some turnover, you might find another diamond in the rough from late signings. There's a lot going on here, you know, and I think like you're talking off season could be even more mm -hmm. like there's a lot of off season question marks that even though there's a ton of rumors for season two, like there's a lot of stuff. that's like, we don't know what the off season it has entailing yeah. for any of this. You know, we just are so used to football league plays. We'll see how far it right. gets. <laughs> now it's like football league plays. Oh God, there's another part to this now. Yeah. Actual league things. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know? know? Yeah. That's one thing I'm super interested to see the off season. I mean, it's been so long since we've seen a league finish a season and then move into a season two and seeing those. What are the things that they adapt to? What are the things that they figured out worked or didn't work during the first season? Where are the markets? What markets are we going to move into? Are we going to see all eight teams? Are we going to see a split hub? Are we going to see just one hub? Are we going to see private owners? Right. The, all of these things are, are potential talking points of, of little, little tidbits that might get dropped from from July 3rd all the way until presumably April of next year. We don't know yep. when they're going to kick off, but I assume in the same ish time time frame, maybe it gets moved out a week or two, depending on when the XFL officially ends. We don't know. We don't know, but we'll be here reporting it and I'm looking forward yep. to it and I can't wait. Um, yeah. Overall though, I mean, I'm, you probably have said it. I'm saying it again, like, look, fans, you got kind of what you wanted, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they are listening. Like the, the, that's the league I think is shown over the season. Like they are adjusting to what people's feedback is not only internally, but externally. Right on. You know, they are listening to people. You know, I imagine it wasn't just coaches, but there's a lot of fan pressure about the rosters. I bet they listened to fan pressure a little bit too and went, yeah, you know, we see the turnover. Some players are getting let go because it's casualties of the roster mm -hmm. size. You guys are making an impact with feedback, you know. That's it's a good thing. They listen. They're trying to listen, it looks like. So I, I say take that home with yeah. you is what I'm trying to tell you. Can't all. be mad at you it. Know? That's that's at least it, right? You can't be mad at yeah. it. Yeah. Take take that home with you, you know. Feedback, constructive criticism and feedback for them is great. Mm -hmm. It's great for any league, you know. At least one that if one has their ears open, which they have shown they for do. Sure. Keep that in mind. Should help with the playoffs, though. I'm excited to see who else they sign. There's been a few quick signings already. Um, the Generals actually picked up a third quarterback, which, you know, kind of shocked me a little bit. But, hey, to each their own. I mean, Luis Pre I mean, Luis Perez didn't even play it down last week, which surprised me. So, you know, keep that in mind. As we move forward here, wanted to remind you guys, too, by the way, we have a great deal with Royal Retros, our buddies over there. Save 10% off on your overall order with the code USFL Podcast. Again, use that code, get overall 10% off with your order on royalretros.com. All right, Stefan, it's time for some recaps, time for some therapy. I already told someone online, therapy session's happening. But I said that before Sunday afternoon happened. I'm good. We'll save the best for last for you. Let's let's start with me. You, you're let's have you ask me what the problem is, please. Well, I mean, I think we saw the problem is that it they just can't get it done just yet. They just can't get it done just yet. Now we did see Fisher. He did bring up. He brought in a kicker. They got it. They you know what? That helped. That helped. Uh, it did, but I mean, you look at that end score and, uh, something changed. Now there, there was a big difference. I think looking at last week compared to week four, Reggie Corbin wasn't as explosive. So maybe they saw something in the film and that's something that coach Riley capitalized on second point, second point here or not coach Riley. I'm sorry. Coach Haley, coach Haley. There you go. I was, about, I was about to say to you, <laughs> my apologies. Uh, but the uh, the bandits, I mean, they were looking pretty good. They started out a little bit slow, but it, I mean, they ended it strong. They ended it strong enough to take you guys out. 
Uh, one in four, but I mean, I can't laugh that much because you and I are in the same boat here. Uh, what were wow. your overall thoughts on the games? What were the things that you think worked for Michigan and didn't uh, work for the bandits? Now I do have some interesting takes because the bandits record would make it seem like they're, and this might be harsh. It would make it seem like they're maybe within that top echelon of teams. But if you look at their three wins, it was Michigan, Houston, and Pittsburgh. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. it'll be interesting to see as we get throughout through the further in the season. Does does that f- score flip back? Does it flip back? We'll have to see. But the Panthers, man, I really thought they were ready to kind of flip things around. And it just it just wasn't working for them this week. It really came down. I, I think this is a game that I'm like, it feels like you're snake. Mm. Uh, th- that's it. That's it. E- even. Even if I go to that last second fumble, you know they're they're de- they're at the mi- they're at midfield. They're you know night you know Shea Patterson has three hundred yards on the evening. His best game of the year. Only the from what I if I'm unless I'm crazy, only the second player this season to throw for three hundred yards in the USFL. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, to some NFL fans, you know it sounds crazy, but hey, look, it's a different league. Let me just put it that way. Nonetheless. We're driving. We have the ball. We're going down there. We're looking like we're going to maybe tie this bad boy up. Get overtime. That was the thing. I'm sitting here. Not only am I hoping Michigan gets a chance to win, I want the overtime so bad. And sure enough, it's it's a, such a cliche ball security issue that causes a fumble and ends the game in just heartbreaking fashion. I am snake bitten in the NFL. I am snake bitten in the USFL. It is following me. Wherever I go. And of course, Shea Patterson has his best night. But you know what one of the key plays in this game was that really flipped the script and gave the Panthers this entire scenario in the first place? A tip pass interception. Yeah. I'm talking at the mm-hmm. line. It was a good tip. All Shea Patterson has his ball tip. Only pick of the night. He was really solid all evening. Dude was slinging the rock in the second half, was getting into a rhythm. Coaches let him do what he wanted when he requested he wanted to throw more. And he was on target and on point. He was using his legs, but he throws one pick. And that that pick was inside the 10. They could have tied the game up, put the pressure back on the bandits earlier in the fourth quarter. And sure enough, here we are. Funny enough, I interviewed the player that got the game-winning touchdown this, this past week for the bandits and Juwan Washington. It just... That's a snake bitten thing for yeah. me, you know, for this week. It's been a lot of other issues for other weeks. It's not like, say, your guys' squad where I could, where like me saying snake bitten is kind of a joke. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> you know, it's been a, this is, it's just like any, it's like we're finding ways to lose in new fashions each week, even when it's good. I hold to hope, though, because they've been playing even some of the best in the league to the wire every week. You just got to put it all together. There's five weeks to do it in a weak division that the North has become. Well, that, that's the thing that we're they're right. Well, there. that's the thing we were talking about earlier. All if Michigan or or Pittsburgh wins this upcoming week, week six, and Philadelphia loses, we have a three way tie for number two in the North. Now, again, you know, yes, there's points and yards and things like that that will come into count. I don't know who who will actually come out on top. But I mean, that just shows you how tight things really are in the North. So, I mean, to your benefits, uh, to your team's benefit, at least amazingly halfway through the season, they have time to turn it around. They're starting to get the blocks in place, but I mean, they gotta, they gotta soon because soon, I mean, Pittsburgh or not Pittsburgh, I'm sorry, New Jersey, (laughs) They're getting close to clinching their seed. I think that if they uh, win this next week I, or two, I, they're if in. If I'm thinking right, I mean, they're pretty close right now, honestly. It, I, I, I would think, I mean, if the way the North is going right now, it, it, the way it is, they could clinch by week mm-hmm. eight. I mean, that, that's how quick. I mean, week seven, maybe, if it if it was like they all lose at the same time, which I don't think is possible. I, I know they can all lose this week, and New Jersey can move up. I don't know if I, I'll have to double check. That's possible mm-hmm. next. Nonetheless, though, you know that's the thing. The two spot is wide open for them. The fact they're still sitting there is crazy to me. But yeah, it's a close, but no cigar. That's all I got. That's all I got. The Bandits. 
I imagine I, you and I, I think have the same point though with the bandits that people are pointing out now where it's like three and two, um, one of their better performances this past week. But of course the three wins people are pointing out now, it's like the, tr- it's a cliche, like weak, like football mm-hmm. team thing where it's like your record doesn't really show the, uh, <laughs> your record doesn't really show what the whole story is because yes, they're, they're three wins are against the gamblers, the Panthers and the mowers. And if you've been following all season, those are the three lowest overall record teams in the entire league. Sort of. And we'll get to that in a little bit because I got a yeah. bone to pick with the gods of statistics and win-loss ratios. But we'll save it for that. <laughs> we have a couple more games to get into. Uh, now, the Saturday game, another one that shocked me, but maybe I shouldn't be. Breakers, Generals. Generals pull it out. Go 4-1 on the season, 27-17. So, again... It harkens back to that point of just a couple differences. Week one, we could be looking at a 5-0 and New New Jersey team and a 4-1 and Birmingham team. Now, here's the big takeaway, Zach. Everyone thought the ref was crazy. They said, ref, you're a madman. Coach Riley, he's in it for the long haul on that dual quarterback system. I don't think so. And I, I feel bad for Mr. Luis Perez because really all they need to do is put that bowling promo on. I thought that was the day they should have put it on because we had the PBA action leading into the game, the professional bowling. But boy, oh boy, DeAndre Johnson, I mean, he's making an argument that this dude's a, a flipping star. He was moving. Here's the thing with him. He's known to be a running quarterback but he's getting dangerous in the air, more dangerous than I think a lot of people expected out of him. And I mean, here's the thing for the breakers is Sloter's clearly hurt. Did you watch United by football leading into the, into the games? This yeah, week? I, I did. I, mm-hmm. That dude's banged oh, up. He was rattling off the list of injuries with his significant other. I don't know if he's married, if it's his fiance, girlfriend, whatever, but he had a good list of injuries beyond the pulled groin that he's kind of catering to right now. And maybe, maybe we're starting, starting to see those effects come out on the field here because now this is the second week in a row. They're a little bit shaky. They're now, uh, you know, they're, they're still three and two. They're still looking good, but you know what? They still, they could, I mean, it's a 10, 10 week season. That's pretty easy to get chiseled down real fast. He's gotten very hot and cold. Mm. As, as of late. And I, I, I don't know injury or not. I, I wonder uh, some of it. I'm wondering if it's just like, like I, I, I can, I categorize him as a gunslinger now. Just he, he very much, I think he tries to see if he can fit it into any narrow pathway that's available. Um, and it's a pass heavy offense. You know, it's RPO it's Fedora's college offense. He's been running. Uh, but they lean heavily on the pass op on the on the passing option of this whole thing, you know. Especially now, Sloter doesn't really he's not really running often. No. He, he, you know that in the groin injury alone, you know, reaggravating it alone will just make you go back to being a stone statue for the most part. So, I want to. I mean, moving forward, I just got to see him be safer with the ball, you know, or just make more sound decisions. You can't win a game with forty one percent completion percentage. That that is go- yeah, yeah. that is godly awful. You a- you have to be able to accurately deliver to your targets and do it in a safe and conductive environment. Or, you know, you receive. I mean, there weren't many drops that I was aware of in that game. They just it was just decisions weren't exactly landing for some of the better better options here. Johnny Dixon. I mean, he had 13 targets, mm-hmm. only four catches. Keep that in mind. That's nine passes that were either dropped or were not in the vicinity, in the right set. As for the generals, you go ben, going back to DeAndre Johnson, you know, I could talk about his day alone. You know, 66% completion percentage is great in any league. Uh, I mean, solid job all day. He had one interception, of course, but, you know, overall, I mean, he managed that offense really well. You know, it was really good stuff from him all afternoon. And the thing is, he doesn't have to worry and do it all. I mean, Darius Victor ran for 95 yards in this one. That's the part that really surprised me, Stefan, mm-hmm. because the Breakers manhandled Mark Thompson the week right. prior. They shut him down. The league leading rusher, they said, no, you're not doing anything. And sure enough, you know, maybe it was Johnson opening up the offense, giving Victor and Trey Williams and company a little more room. 
but they, I mean, Victor popped off for five and a half yards a pop for this mm-hmm. game. He was chugging. Dude was running it all around and up. Well, down. and you know, we learned about his massive thighs. Thick thighs save lives, by Dude. the way. 30 inch thighs, bro. 30 inch thighs. 30 inch thighs. Dude, I, I was laughing so hard when with the broadcast team talking about it. And as I'm laughing, I really started thinking, I was like, bro, 30 inch thighs. Yes. Bro, what are you feeding them over there, man? That is insane. That that is some that is some glorious <laughs> sideline reporting. Great way to spend your rain delay, too, by yeah. the way. I think. I think that's what get lo- gets lost in translations. They had to do, kill a half hour to do this, but uh, to do that. But like, thick thighs save lives. You got to take that home with you. And it's on a T-shirt yeah. now. It, now the, the the whole breaking teas thing. That's the reason they brought it in. You know, like completely reactionary, like in season stuff. And of course, they have to make a T-shirt out. Of it. Which is sweet. I love new merch. You know what I mean? Something. It's not mm-hmm. just a team logo. Now we got the shark dog. We got the thick. Uh, whatever you know the thighs shirt but this just shows we're gonna get what seemingly a shirt a week (laughs) sign me up there and i'll mention one final thing on this game um because first off if you had any doubts about the generals um they should be gone it's a very it's a well put together roster mike riley has been through the ringer on spring football now for a minute guy knows how to coach a spring football team and a youthful team one that needs coaching like he is such a calm demeanor and such a teaching approach to the game i i am impressed by him when they do mic up sessions on him or when i see him go go on the mm-hmm. sidelines he's great um and something else with the generals their offense is evolving over time too um remember randy satterfield he has not shown up in recent weeks that is amazing to think about with his week one sh- performance not saying that he's been bad but like Every week it's been a different guy. Yeah. Week one was Randy Satter, Satterfield, of course. You know, we've had weeks, of course, where you have Alonzo Moore having his own day. Lately, Cavante Turpin, who I I said in the spring stock, for example, mm-hmm. that I had high hopes and aspirations for him showing out. Last two weeks, he has been all over the place. They're getting him in space. They're getting him yard after the catch scenarios and passing downs. He's going to keep developing. I don't think this is going to be a one or week, two week trick pony. Kamonte Turpin is a talented, speedy, shifty individual. He's only going to get more touches mm. as they move along. There's a lot of weapons on this team now that the passing game is getting more established. And like you said, I'm kind of starting to believe too. DeAndre Johnson's kind of got a stranglehold on this now. Um, Cause I mean, no offense to Luis Perez. I like him. I think he could go somewhere else and play instantly in the usfl oh, sure but if you were able to deliver pass accurately and consistently throw the deep ball and johnson brings the weapon of his legs it's hard to keep doing a two qb system at that mm-hmm. point because then i ask where's the flow if the guy can throw it too why are you even bothering with the two qb system then well and the problem with the two qb system too is i mean it's almost a tell for the defense oh they're gonna run it, it kind they're of gonna is. pass it right Right. If you do an RPO in that system without Johnson, he's not going to mm-hmm. run. I mean, Louis could, but he's definitely not as fast as DeAndre. Yeah. You know, that that is that weapon is eliminated. So I, I don't know. This week will be interesting for them uh, in when they have their mat, matchup, of course, going against uh, the Gamblers. Because if they do it again, that all but reconfirms it, I think. Mm-hmm. But that was the first sign of maybe things are shifting mm-hmm. to a traditional one backup. Which in that case, the generals have the best QB room in the USFL, hands down. What? Louise being a backup is insane and, to me. I mean, on the ground, they are pretty scary. They're pretty scary. And, yeah. and that's the thing, too, is you brought it up earlier. It's not just one player. They're they're maybe arguably the best team in the league as far as having those supporting cast kind of spread out, whether it's receivers, the quarterbacks, the running core. They don't have to depend on one of each. They have kind of a they have a couple in each of those categories that's going to show mm-hmm. up for them, and that that's one of the most dangerous things that you can have, especially in a in a startup league where there's limited teams. Right, you can start tearing people right. apart. We're starting to see it. the The only other one I would say that has a better setup mm. is the Stallions. Well, we're going to get to that, that. Yes, that, and that leads into our mm. next one here. Look. Birmingham, they, I'm going to put that right out in front, you know, because again, we talk about fans, but it seems like, I think, 
I think like a third of the conversation on this league is about like fan attendance and response with the local crowd. Take it as you will. I'm going to leave it at that anymore. Um, they set it up. It was a noon. It was a noon Eastern game, eleven Central, in Birmingham, in the Deep South, mm-hmm. on a yes. Sunday. Yes, yes. If you aren't connecting the dots, church might be a factor. And I'm not saying church is the only reason. It was a lesser crowd. It was afternoon. It was hot sun, as well. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it there's was a fact hot day out there. They were talking about that during the game. Yeah. yeah. It was it was definitely one of the first. I think it was like the definitive first week where people are like, "Man, it's uh, hot and humid." Right, right, right. In the deep south, so factors for that. Nonetheless, people showed out. The Stallions take on the Stars, who, as we know, explosive offense, questions at the line, god awful run defense <laughs> structure, but they've made it mm-hmm. work. They're they're right there in the North race. They've gotten some breaks, and you know. Hope on the horizon with Brian Scott going to be coming back at some point in the short term now. Start out strong. They actually start out really strong. Alex Magoo started this game, and they went back to Jamar Smith. And if Jamar Smith doesn't have the job next week, I think you have, you not, I won't say riots, but you'll have, you'll have disgruntled people at Protective Stadium yelling at Skip Holtz going, Skip, why did you do it Mm -hmm. last week? Because Jamar came out. And I don't know if it's just one of those things you switch to a backup and the backup just has the juice mm-hmm. of coming out there. But he looked, it was this, it's the most crisp he's looked all mm-hmm. year. And he just, he just systematically at times ripped apart the Stallions or CJ Maribel. Yeah. Those two systematically just ripped apart Philadelphia all day. It, it changed. Yeah. Once Jamar Smith came into the game, it was like night and day. Which is unfortunate for Magoo, right? Because that's not necessarily the case. There's ebbs and flows in games, and there's all sorts of reasons. But I remember on the Discord, everybody was freaking out because the Stallions were losing at halftime. Again, they were only down by three. But I had to remind everybody, they've only led at halftime once this season. (laughs) They are a second-half team. Without a doubt. Yeah, and they came in, Second and half. Smith, uh, I mean, yeah, I would be amazed if he didn't solidify that starting spot going further. But it really does show how dangerous they are, just to tie into the point of overall team. Alex Magoo is no slouch. He he came in, and he scored. He brought them in scoring position early in the game, where he had problems keeping it consistent, right? Yes. And finding the receivers, or the receivers kind of understanding his plays and knowing exactly where he wants to target where he's targeting them. Whereas, I mean, Smith came in and like you said, he can, he can get you by air. He can get you by ground. It keeps you on your toes. And he looked flipping convincing doing it. And they played this game without shark dog. Right. So yeah. they're, and they were out a couple of their players, but yeah, CJ Maripol picked up the slack. You had Smith picking up the slack. And at the end of the day, you wouldn't even know that they were down at the at halftime because they took about 30 to 17. Well, and, and I think because, so like, here's the thing with, with Smith, I've noticed, you know, him, obviously quarterbacks have their own preferences and they have their own, they have their own connections with different folks out there when it terms, when it comes to throwing the rock, you know, who was getting targets that I, for some, I was missing out on in terms of like, I guess not seeing as often like Osiris Mitchell and Marlon Williams, their production repicked up mm-hmm. again. And I was going, okay, these guys clearly Jamar likes them. But they're talented. Marlon Williams is excellent in space. The guy is a yards after catch freak in the league right now. Victor Bolden is the all purpose yards yeah. leader in the league. He's an after the catch freak, too. Like the offense seems to open up a little more diversely with Jamar in there. I think he's just grasped it more because he also was with Skip in college, yeah. which a lot of people hinted at the draft. Like it, it's a great backup, if not the starter off the gate. And, you know, I didn't fully read into it at the time because I was thinking draft stats. I was still thinking like NFL-esque mm-hmm. likeness to it. But sure enough, I should have thought like spring football. Right. The connection's right there. It just fits. It works the best. And I, this is me complaining about a 5-0 and team right now. Like defensively, the Stallions pitched a shutout second mm-hmm. half. That's what, another thing you got to take away. You know, sure, they, had, they were shaky. Like Philadelphia punched them in the face right out of the gate for the first half. And early in the second quarter, but they kind of adjusted like they do second half and they just came after case Cookus. He was uncomfortable the entire second half sacks hits, no flow. There was little to no yeah, flow yeah, yeah. whatsoever for the stars. And I think, I think Bart Andrews just didn't know what to do 
Like they were just, they honestly were getting consistently exotic pressures all over the place. Oh yeah, they were. They were not letting. And without up. a and without a and without a stable run game, the stars are okay, but they don't have a stable run game. They're a passing team first, much like the Breakers are. You know, if you can't get the run, the run game going and your passes and you're just getting sacked or hit, yeah, it was a done deal. Like the flow of the game completely shift out of the half. It wasn't even the same no, contest after halftime. Not at all. But I mean, at the end of the day, Stallion's still five and zero. Oh. They're just they're it, they're uncanny at this point. Uh, but like I said, you know, you look at that week one. Wouldn't it be amazing if the championship game is a repeat of week one? Cap it off. Start it off. Cap it off the same way. And I mean, I could see either team team pulling it out if both those teams make it to the championship and barring nothing major changes with the rosters before then, I mean, it's, it's either one for me. I mean, those, those are the probably the two contenders at this point for the championship. If you ask me halfway through the season Mm -hmm. and both the games proved it this week. Yeah. The stallions get another win, you know, another home crowd, another, I mean, they have home crowd, home field advantage technically all year, but I mean, another win for the home team, Another solid one, solid one you could put in your cap, and I think solidifies where the team's going here. You know, Jay Mars that also got to give a shout there for Bo Scarborough made his appearance oh, yeah. as expected. He wasn't the focus, which not fully surprised. He came in with the weekend. I'm wondering how much more they mix him in with CJ Marable mm-hmm. moving forward. They did use they did T formation later in the game, which that warmed my heart. That's old school <laughs> football right there. T formation. That's a bears. Like that's a bear staple from back in the mm-hmm. day. I thought that was pretty cool that they did that to end it. Um, but yeah, Bo, you know, he was, you can tell he's popular. With the fans. Oh, yeah. great, great. He, people were definitely attracted to him after the game. Uh, plenty of smiles, plenty of autographs on that. end. final game on the week five slate, Pittsburgh and Houston. So now I have to be the therapist <laughs> here. Stefan, the troubles I see here, how Houston doesn't know how to finish opponents off. They are the they are the uh, they are the yin to the yang of Birmingham. First half, they can do whatever the heck they want and get to a lead. They can do they can do basically no little to no wrong sometimes in the first half. Defense steps things up, keeps the games close. Clayton Thorson seems to play best in the first half generally. Mark Thompson, you know, they can get the running game down earlier. But the second half, they just don't seem to know how to pull away. They don't know how to, they haven't want to finish drives. This time you could argue, of course, Thorson injured one of his fingers that might have affected it. But things just, game flow does not seem to be in the favor of the gamblers anytime they have to play four quarters, which is every game this year. (laughs) Unfortunately. And even then, like, this could be an 0 5 squad because they're not a second half Mm -hmm. team. They're lucky that the Panthers are just as snake bitten as them yeah. in some ways. Because <laughs> that Pittsburgh got a win off of a off of a great story and a great performance by switching in Van Lee. And it was a hell of a game to, to finish. Houston had every chance to finish off Pittsburgh. They had a miraculous catch to do yeah. it. And yet somehow, some way, the Maulers get the best story of the weekend in the league. Well, you know what? You know, Part of me, the podcaster in me, I put this on Twitter. The podcaster in me is very happy that I called it because if if you guys don't remember last week in our picks, I said the ballers were going to do it. And half of it was me trying to light a fire under the gamblers to get a win. Hey, you know what? It didn't work. And I was right. The gamblers, though. Come on, guys. That's I mean, geez, come on. How many games can you lose at the end? And not only at the end, I was sitting there talking to my wife. She knows. She knows the ins and outs, the good and the bads of a football fandom. She grew up a Broncos fan. I mean, lucky her. Now she knows what it's like to be a Lions fan. And so I was telling her, she said, oh, we should be able to win this. I said, no, 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 no. I said, I guarantee you we lose this game. And I said, and I bet you it's on the last play of the game. And (laughs) right as it happened, she looked at me. She's like, oh, my God, you were right. And I said, yeah congratulations to me i was right but that's you know the life of a lions fan now the life of a gamblers fan we're so close that's the thing that kills me i know you feel it after last week with uh, oh, the with the kick 
But man, I don't know how many times you can lose a game in the fourth quarter. Again, being a Lions fan, I'm used to winning the games in the fourth quarter, at least when Stafford was there. Maybe not win a lot of games, but when you do, you come up from behind and you win big in the fourth. Here, we're always taking the lead in. We got one win on the season. We're sitting at the bottom of the South with, I mean, unless the bandits really fall apart and we pick things up, we're coming in dead last. And even then, even if the bandits fall apart, I find it hard to believe that we're going to catch up to the bandits and the breakers or either one of them, right? People need to start losing and we need to start winning, but there's no reason for me, at least when I look at the gamblers to think, oh, the momentum's picking up. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I joked Thorson redemption yep. tour. I don't know if it's, I just don't know. I mean, I feel like every, the, and this doesn't fall on the players. I think this falls more on the coaching staff. Quite honestly, you ran out of your plays. You, everybody knows they, they, everybody's watched the film. They say, okay, th- it's going to be one of these things. Here's what you look out for. Here's when you blitz them. Here's when you get your coverage. And we're going to go through this in our midweek mid season review. Like when you look at the stats compared to the record here, it's almost comical. It's almost <laughs> flipping comical and then go out 21 to 20. But I mean, here's the good in it. Vadley, Vadley earned that Pittsburgh Maulers team a win there. I mean, nobody can laugh at the Maulers now because they have a tied record with Michigan and Houston. And honestly, as we mentioned, if the, if Pittsburgh wins this next weekend and Philadelphia loses, and we're not even going to talk about Michigan now. Like they could get into the playoffs. That's the thing that's yeah. We might see Pittsburgh in the playoffs, and I mean, in the fluke of all flukes, we could see them in the championship. And they're going to have the we- biggest flipping pizza party if they win that game. I mean, wouldn't oh that be God. the story? Wouldn't that be the story of the century? Right? I I would I would pay money to see that. But but you know what kills me? I, I feel and I feel good for Pittsburgh after this week. They needed this. You know, they, I mean, they've, there's people have ragged on them, not only for the pizza thing, you make what you want of that, but like, I mean, it, of course you're bottom of the league too. So like yeah. people are like, you know, no one, want, no one wants to give good vibes to the one that's in the basement of the, of the league, but I mean, walk off finish as well. looks great for the league itself. And the story behind it, I mean, badly five days before this is sitting on his couch, watching the, watching probably the USFL leaves. They said on the broadcast watching football. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm pretty sure they mean watching this league. And he gets a call and he's, he's up, he's backing up Kyle Oletta, Kyle Oletta, who kind of falls in the same pattern he's been in recent weeks. He, he doesn't push the ball downfield. I think he kind of gets too conservative with where he throws mm-hmm. it. They put Vad in vad has got mobility and he is also slinging the rock. Well, and they pull this thing off. You know, they, they, they stayed calm you get to hear the whole drive where it's Kirby Wilson basically putting the game on his shoulders, puts his hands on his shoulders yeah. and is saying, what do you feel yeah. good with? I mean, you know, and I, I that's a story. That's a football story moment right there. If you could ask for one, that's what these mics do. That's where all this coverage is for. Right here. That, this is the stuff that you set up for is this, is this moment right here. And they got it delivered. Unfortunately for Pittsburgh, this is where I have to turn the script here. It's great. They got that win. So, no uh, winless season. Awesome. Here, here's your next three games, Stefan. Yeah. Th- this will hurt. And this is with this week. You have the Breakers this week. You have the Stallions in we- two weeks from now. You have the Generals. Th- you have to get through that Yeah. to even keep up in the playoff race. Like That's the only downside. Now, credit. Maybe this is a spark they needed. Okay? Maybe this was it. Because Kirby... Re- I think Kirby might have had a breakthrough here, possibly. Yeah. I'm not... I'm not saying that's in foreshadowing what I'm going to say in a, in a minute on the uh, picks, but that's a gauntlet to go mm. through. They're, they need to – look, their thing is take this energy that they needed. For the gamblers, I don't know what to say. I think your point of they're great with the game script, and then once they have to get off and deviate off it, it just feels like it falls mm-hmm. apart. Because to me, that's what it feels like too. It just falls apart after the game script early on goes away. Right. Those like – few plays that are like, we're going to do this. This is the first few drives. Like after that, it just feels like everything's completely off the rails with Houston. 
Yeah, they just, I don't, just don't get there. And it. here's the thing: is the defense has been picking up the slack the last couple of weeks too, and they just can't capitalize on it. I mean, there were some points in that game this this past weekend where the defense got the ball, got some good return yards, put them near midfield, past midfield, like 40 yards to go, and they still couldn't get any points on the drive. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta get those Have points, to. man. You can't just let them sitting out there because, I mean, otherwise you lose by a one-point game to what was the worst team in the league. Now you're sitting there along with them. It is what it is. Bottom of the South. I'm no newcomer to this. Like I said, I'm a Lions fan. I'm actually a little sad that I, I may have hexed the Houston Gamblers, uh, but my fandom <laughs> maybe uh, doing a little bit more harm than good here. It's like how I'm with the Panthers, you know, Bears fan makes me feel like I screwed something up with that too, <laughs> you know, but to a slightly lesser degree, because at least the Bears have some more championships to go on in the history books. That's all I can give you on with that. Uh, <laughs> Moving, moving on as we continue again this week, we continue with the theme of mid season. Mm. So here's the, here's the thing, you know, a lot of stuff we have learned, I think through five weeks, you know, and I, I, Stefan, you put a great list of questions here that I would, I also agree with putting up on this, uh, in terms of our rundown. So big thing are the stallions unstoppable. They're a final undefeated team left They're They had that week three slug fest against the breakers. That was pump. That was sorry. Week four. That was slug slugfest against the breakers. That was pumped up there. Mm -hmm. You know, are they, are they beatable? So I think they're beatable. Uh, well, I don't know. I think here's the thing. I could see them going 10 and zero. but I, if I was a coach, I would really want us to get a loss by week seven, week seven. I would want a loss by, you could take a loss week 10. You could take a loss week nine, depending on w what you're really doing out there. You probably don't want to pull your rosters out too much because you want to keep them in momentum. But if you don't get a loss, you're going into this 10 and 0. Oh my God. There's just so much uh, to me. That's the worst case scenario. Other people probably think I'm crazy. Right. But I feel like well, you I need that loss in there to like show you that you can lose to yeah. get there, get your players fired up move into that offseason because you don't want to take your first loss week 11 right right or even week i see what you're doing you, you're you're saying a reality check to kind of get them in place and yeah i mean sure if that's what they they might need i'm all for that i i mean i think that there are i think it really just comes down to maybe i don't know maybe outrunning them in the first half and then just finding a way to get through the storm in the second. Mm -hmm. That's the best I can put. You know, I think like the breakers, I think were one uh, to me, you know, the generals came the closest, obvi yeah. obviously they, you know, they really sprinted out of the gate in that first matchup credit. It's week one jitters. You know, I thought the breakers when the third quarter started and they took the league lead back, I thought that that was going to be it. They just find ways to win right now. Um, and I don't know, it's coming harder and harder for me to say that. I mean, Looking at, like, for example, the Stallions, rest of their schedule, if we're talking that, obviously they have the Panthers coming up, which, I mean, hey, things can happen. But, you know, I still still feel <laughs> it's a snake-bitten team that I'm going to be talking about with Jeff Fisher. They have that rematch, of course, with the Breakers looming three weeks from now. You know, they got the Maulers before that. Credit, that could be a trap game. You know, there's always this thing you got to think about oh, when yeah. you're the big guy on campus, you know. And they got the Gamblers. Hey, trap game. And you got the bandits to end the season as well. So anything's fair game. I think they, I think it's really about, you have to play all four quarters against them because skip is, uh, he must be one of the best at halftime speeches. Cause I mean, oh, he yeah. gets these guys to come back out and just smack you in the mouth, <laughs> like no remorse. They're going to find a way to win and play their brand of football. Mm. You know, the crowd noise. I don't know if it full, I don't know if it fully affects it. Yes. Energy does help for players, but like, I still think there's a way you can pull it off home team or not in theory right. for them. Um, good question here. Better chance of the playoffs Panthers or Maulers. And I'm, I'm just going to answer this based on what I've seen with the schedule. I'm going with the Panthers. <laughs> I, I, the Maulers schedule. I'm sorry, man, that, that Mauler schedule, you have the top three teams in the league, three mm -hmm. straight weeks. I, I can't Here's do the it. thing though. If they win those games, then all of a sudden they're the scariest team in the league. Well, sure. Right. Then they're sure. looking at 
what, uh, what five, five and four record, but they've beat <laughs> some of the gnarliest teams. And I mean, that might be enough. Who knows? Who knows? All right. I tend to agree with you. I think the Panthers have a better shot of getting in there. There's they're so close. It's like the gamblers. It feels like they're one tweak away. And I would say the the Panthers are probably less of a tweak away uh, to really being a successful team. I mean, your your defense is consistently yeah. out there keeping generally keeping the games low scoring, at least against you. Right. Yeah. Shea seems to be picking up his rhythm. If Paxton can get back in the game, I mean, that game that he was in before he got injured was arguably the game of his career, at least professional career. Dude was out there looking good, making points uh, and getting the extra points afterwards. So, yeah, I, I tend to agree with the Panthers there. It's more, it's just an interesting one to look at because, again, I couldn't add the, the gamblers in there. One, they're in the South, but two, I mean, it, the, the bandits, essentially the bandits and the breakers just need to start losing everything. And the gamblers need to start changing it around. I, at this point, I find I, it's very slim chance that I see Houston making it, which is unfortunate mm-hmm. now Panthers. So here's what's interesting. Just moving to this next point, little known fact, possibly the Panthers start in 1983 where they were yep. the champions of that inaugural season started one and four. They did again, different really? length of season, but is this the omen that Jeff Fisher needed? Because again, everybody jokes about five and five, five and five is good enough to get you in the playoffs in the North. And wouldn't that be just so fitting, so perfect Fisher at five and five getting in the playoffs. Well, I, I think I think at least the playoff run is a very much a possibility for them to do it. And here here's the thing. You have a weak division in the north. So you play two games per per season for every divisional opponent. So yeah, you got another matchup with the generals, but hey, you played them close. The thing is the Panthers defense is pretty good. It's just that they can't get out of their own way on offense. This past week they almost did. But like you had one or two mistakes that buried mm-hmm. you, and actually, funny enough, defense didn't come up in clutch at the end. I digress. You know, I look at the end schedule. You know, you got to play the you got to play the Generals, the Maulers, and the Stars one more time. You got the Stallions coming up this week, and then you have the Breakers next. Credit. You have two straight games that are rough. But here's the thing: if the Maulers have those three back to back, so you got to deal with that. The Stars, up and down. Mm-hmm. They were one good kick away from pulling this off. Michigan has a path in a weak division to do it. I think here's the deal. I think if you can steal one of these South games and you can win out the North games, not only do you get the coveted Jeff Fisher middle of the road (laughs) record that everyone assumed, but you also lock down that seed. Mm -hmm. I think you can get that. I, I, there's a path here. You just have to play smarter football and it has to start this week. Of course, it has to be against the one team that knows how to finish a game. <laughs> but I'll tell you, man, this is a roster that's looking that has shown every week that it can be there in the end. Mm. It just has to finish off games and know how to not have its own, itself or its own coaching get in the right. Way. Um, I don't know if they'll win a championship though. I'm not. I won't predict a 1983 like that that iteration. Mm. I won't predict that. But I see a path to the playoffs with how the North is structured. Right. Hell, Philadelphia, I mean, they're two and three. Again, they could easily be one and four. But like I said, they have their own questions. You know, this league is more is more run heavy than pass anyway. They're the worst rushing team in the league. And if, well, same deal. You know, I deal with that. Case Cookus or Brian Scott, one or the other, they have not solved their problems protecting the quarterback. Eventually that burns mm-hmm. them in these games. It burned them against the Generals. It burned them against the Stallions. It even almost, I mean, Michigan, funny enough, they didn't get really much pressure on them at all. But, I mean, with more roster signs and such, I'm just saying, the Stars, they have to watch out. Oh, yeah. You know, they the Panthers have a path. The Stars do, I think, too. But they, that second matchup in Week 8, that is going to be the make or break mm-hmm. to me on who gets that second seed right there. Well, and I mean, even if the Stars make it, they're going to, I mean, most likely go in and play the Generals, which... 
I feel like are just going to run all over them and, and just take advantage of them and make it happen. So I, at this point, it looks like it's, it's generals in the North and probably, probably stallions in the South, but the South is so much more interesting because again, the stallions are undefeated. Yes. But I feel like a lot of these games could have gone either way in the stallions, at least the big ones, right? You look at the, uh, that breakers game could have gone either way. Bandits might be able to take them out. Houston could take them out, but it would be a trap game. They're not, like I said, they're not. Yeah. At this point, I'd be. It would have to be the turnaround of the century uh, for the gamblers to get in there. So that's not too much to worry about. So it, I mean, it, it's looking like it should be a fun battle in the South to see who comes out into the championship. But at this point, the North. I mean, easy coasting for the for the generals, unless you know anything could happen, right? Injuries. Or, yeah. Roster anything right, still right. can i mean any signings can too they're oh, yeah. doing them constantly i don't I'm, i haven't understood or heard or not, i have understood but i haven't heard any restrictions on the week that you can't i'm assuming that at some point that comes into play mm-hmm. with the playoffs for example like now i see this in arena football all the time by the way like people sign people for like the playoff stretch right. i imagine with this with a higher up league i don't know if you like go into the playoffs and are going yeah, we signed like five guys. No ringers allowed. Off, yeah, off, off the free agent list because we need them. I'm just going. Oh, great! This changed everything. No, I don't. But I, I don't know. We, that's something to keep an eye mm-hmm. on through, through the rest of the year because the playoffs are going to be in play, and we'll be making discussions on rosters like they have this week, pretty soon. Oh, yeah. Finally, as we wrap up with, of course, the midseason portion, the USFL has been dropping uh, statistical leaders throughout the weeks. So. They've also dropped, of course, leaders in many of the other categories of other pieces of the league. So uh, some of them you'll be kind of surprised. Uh, my own co-host definitely knows <laughs> for sure. Uh, but let's get into this. Passing yards. Kyle Sloter's leading this from the New Orleans Breakers. I don't think anyone's surprised by that. Larry Fedora's had him throwing the rock everywhere. He's been in the starting chair since day one. So no variance at all in terms of flip-flopping like we've seen through the first five weeks. Uh, he's been going all over the place. Doesn't mean he's leading in other areas. He's definitely pushing it in terms of interceptions, mind you. Uh, touchdowns, he's one of the tops. He's not the leader, though. That's Clayton Thorson. Gambler's quarterback himself has seven touchdown passes right now. Kind of nuts to think about, as well as the fact that the Gamblers have the leading rusher in the league in Mark Thompson as well. Just keeps on stacking up. Yeah, I don't series. get it. I'm, I got I mean, I got another one for you. I'll throw, I'll throw two more. They got the receiving TDs leader, which I guess ties into the passing sure. ones. But I mean, Isaiah Zuber, that's his, that's Thorson's main guy on deep, on deep routes and getting into the end zone right now. Uh, dude's been finding ways to grab, to grab some nice catches as of late, especially last week too, mind you. And your kicking points leader, Nick Vogel. I mean, he got some of the most, got some of the top ones you would think that should be more than one win yeah, when you look at the stats and you look at the record this makes no sense right you think okay here's your stats leaders clearly these are probably part of the the upper echelon of teams well i don't get it i don't understand because i mean i look at 400 rushing yards i'm like oh my god that's pretty good 39 points for kicking halfway through a season sign them up yeah seven touchdowns four receptions but again it's all been these close right at the end game. So it makes sense. They'd be holding their own, their defense, which, I mean, there's some points in the games where their defense looks like the greatest thing, the greatest defense that's ever hit the field. And clearly, Mm -hmm. (laughs) clearly at the end of the game though, that's when they lose their steam. That's when those fake cigarettes start taking their toll (laughs) on them over there. But yeah, I I mean, the rest of this makes sense because then you have Kyle Sloter passing yard uh, leader here. You move over to the rushing touchdowns, Darius Victor with the generals. All of this makes sense. Trey Walker, right? But well, it, it, that, that one actually is crazy because Walker's leading now. Bailey Gaither was leading at week two. Oh, yeah. He, he had an injury that knocked him out the previous two weeks, and he came back this week. So you've had two Mauler's receivers leading the league in, re- in receiving yeah. yards? Yeah, yeah. Somehow that's happened, and they're one and four. What? Yeah, this it's so goofy. Well, it, it reminds me of when we were there week one and we were looking at the stats and the scores throughout all at least the three games that we watched. And I mean, in all three of them at halftime, if you looked at this final score and the box sto- score and the stats, you wouldn't believe it. 
you would say, well, no, no, no. Clearly they got the scores backwards. And now we're seeing this halfway through the season. Now, if anything, if anything, because this is the first season, we're moving into season two. Hopefully you get those second year options. The one benefit for the gamblers is they have some really good building blocks here. They just need to get, they need to spice up that playbook and get those second half jitters kind of solved for because I mean, just looking at this, they could be one of the top teams. If you just look oh, at they these could stats. Just, on, yeah. just on the stats, yeah. you know, that, that, that alone, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, some, some of your stats leaders, the gamblers are all over the place as well as all over the place in terms of how they play a game. I'm not, it's two for each. I, I find it. It's too funny to me. It, it's too funny. It's just stats. Funny. That's the great thing with football as well. Like NBA, MLB, you know, even you can argue like those, you can look at a, at a box score mm. and you can kind of know what happened oh, yeah. in a way like football, complete crap. Oh, yeah. Looking at a box score gives you, it can, sometimes it'll give you the story. It doesn't always do that. It, that that's the thing. It, some stuff is completely nonsense. Oh, sure. 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 This is one of those situations right here. So that, Fun stuff. Though, so I got to ask you at. if mid season review. I mean, clearly I've been having fun. You've been having fun, but looking forward to the oh, yeah. championship game. If uh, let's, uh, who do you think pulling it out? Who do you think's winning? Who do you think we're going to see taking it at the end of the day? I mean, it, we'll, we'll even just say out of the generals and the stallions and maybe in the breakers, general stallions, breakers are those three. Do you have a preference? Hmm. You know, I've got that one booked for a week one rematch of Stallions Gam of Stallions Generals. There's no question about it, by the way, just to reaffirm that. Um, I right now am going to side with the Stallions a little bit. Um, but I think it's going to be another one of those come down to the wire type of contests. And even more so because the Generals, I think, have evolved a little more since we last saw them. I think there's a good argument the generals could pull right. it off. Well, that's as well. That's where I was going to um, go with it. I thought it was interesting but, going yeah. back to our week one picks where you I, picked the generals. Mm-hmm. I picked the stallions. We might, I, we might do a flip here. Yeah. I think if this was a wager, like a line for wagering, I would do it as a pick mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't even do it as a, as like an over, uh, I wouldn't even do right. it as like, who's a favorite. It's a pick mm-hmm. to me because even with that, like last second loss that bur- that the generals had on we- opening night. I mean, Deandre Johnson's now more of a passer than he was week mm-hmm. one. You have weapons that are coming out that weren't really as present week one as well. And Jamar Smith, if he continues his upward trend like he did last week, I mean, there's a lot of fireworks that could be going off on July mm-hmm. 3rd. I think it's those two right now. Um, the only, the only way I change it is if the breakers know how to turn down the turnovers. If Kyle Slaughter slows down a minute, has ball control, tucks that bad boy away, doesn't fumble, like that's the big thing. Right. They need to be more consistent. I think the Breakers are on that verge. The Stallions are just the more consistent football sure. team overall and the one that knows how to finish games. Yeah, when it comes to the Breakers, I think it really just comes down to the health of Kyle Slaughter as well, right? That's so it. if he's, that's I mean, if he's 100% by the playoffs, then, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it could be anyone's game between the Stallions and the Breakers getting into the into the championship there. So I, I really hope that happens, quite honestly, because I want to see, I want to see a, a fun, good, competitive game, whoever it is, whoever does make it. Yeah, in if, there. hey, if, and if you're, look, if you're watching us on YouTube, leave it in the comments who you think the championship will be and who's going to win at this point. Because, I mean, I think, I think right now you can pick the two top divisional guys and kind of say it's a rematch of week mm-hmm. one. But, I mean, hey, we love to hear your theories, your thoughts, your speculation. Yeah. Drop it in the comments of this video, of the video version, or send us it over on our social. Just saying. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic because I think there's a lot of opinions on it right now, or I think this will set up for a matchup that you're going to have people debating on it until it does actually happen. Before we go out in here for the night, we got to do our preview of the week. We got to do our pickums. So we got to get this all sorted out. So, I mean, last week, I, again, feel great as a podcast or horrible as a fan, but you know what? It was that pick that I'm, that's the, the ref redemption tour starts now. Yep. I edged one out on you. Now we're, we have a three game differential. So this is, it's getting down to it. We have five weeks. So even if I pick one different each week, 
and get it right, I, I could still pull this out. Slowly chip away. I, I'm barely over 500. Um, I'm going to attribute that to the variance of how spring football goes. Simple as yeah. that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to learn the tendencies in my lessons. We'll see how this plays out. First thing on the docket, Saturday, 1 o'clock Eastern time on NBC, the Tampa Bay Bandits coming off a win against my Panthers. <sighs> they take on the Philadelphia Stars, who are going to be the home team in this, of course, we know right. home away. It's in Birmingham. Nonetheless, Jordan Ta'amu, solid previous performance. Um, Bandits came out to play. Todd Haley's trying to find, get that squad to find its way. Um, Philadelphia is their next opponent. It would be out of the three they've won against so far, this would be the next highest ranked if they could get this victory. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia, I mean, what is there to say? High octane passing offense when things get in rhythm. Um, can they get it corrected this week? Can they put together a full game again? I mean, that's the story, right? And so, honestly, quite the same for the Bandits, right? Can they keep it consistent? Can they can they win? Uh, again, maybe the, star, the Stars are a little down and out because they're with their backup, but Case Cook has shown mm -hmm. that he can make it happen on the field. Uh, I think this is going to be a close one. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to get say, okay, the Bandits are probably going to pull this one out. To me, it's more of a coin toss. I, I, I'm actually still a little bit torn. I'm, I, I, I'm assuming you're going for the bandits. Let me start there. I, I am. Okay. Um, I, I think it's an overall more complete team that the bandits have. Even if you are doing this whole hot and cold thing that it seems like Todd Haley's group is doing, I felt like last week was pretty good breakthrough right. for him because I, I think a lot of people realize Michigan's defense is a lot better than what the, the record shows. Uh, it was a really solid setup. It felt like receivers were starting to finally get on the same page with Jordan Tahamu at times. Um, that's how I label it. So I think I think defensively they can expo they can exploit what the stars are terrible mm -hmm. at. And I mean Juwan Washington, sure, he didn't have a great rushing game last week. He, had, he did get that one awesome you know game clincher mm -hmm. to end it. But dude can find lanes, and dude is a shifty runner. I bet they lean on him a lot more. Right. In this one, and maybe I, I just I don't I don't think Philadelphia has enough gas in the tank is what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, half of me wants to go against you, but you know, if it works, it's great for me. If it doesn't, then it puts me in the hole pretty bad. Uh, yeah, you're playing the you're playing the pick 'em economy yeah, too yeah. at this point. You know, I'm gonna have to side with you. I'm gonna stay with my 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 gut is the bandits probably pull it out, but I wouldn't be see, I wouldn't be surprised to see this be a close game, especially at halftime. Second, I think it probably a lot of it will come down to the second half. Who has the will? Who has the way? Who has the momentum to keep it kind of moving in that second half? Uh, but, yeah, I think Tayamu's kind of getting into his rhythm, finding his receivers a little bit better because, I mean, that was what was really hurting him early in the season. Is he was lobbing those balls down there. There was just silly things, either th through the hands or it, some of those catches they just need to be getting, but – they're, they're starting to find their way. So, yeah, I'm going to have to go with the bandits there. So that one's not going to be my my get past you this one this week. I don't know if this next one is going to be either uh, unless you you really got that homer pick, which I think you should, Zach. I mean, the, the, I, the Stallions I, are mm. due for a loss. The Panthers, they're so dang close every week. Can they do it? I'm going to throw you a bone and I'll, I'll do oh, it. Oh, um, sign me up. I, I, I'm, I'm, and, and here's, here's the deal. I, I think Michigan has found the, has found a consistent rhythm for Shea. Uh, their whole deal. I mean, that, that's the only thing I'm going to give, give them that makes me nervous about doing this. I'm still going to do it. Just, I'll call it as a Homer pick yeah. this week. Um, Birmingham's pass rush is going to cause havoc one way or another. Um, can these can the Panthers get the run game going to help Shea get some sort of relief to where he can get into rhythm passing? That's what I'm going to lean on. I'm going to say that you got some pent up frustration from that team that the Panthers just pull out the upset, come in, and it's going to be a tight one. What'll be the kicker though is that Cole Murphy will come in and knock a game winning field goal. In is my is my prediction. I that that's what I'm going on. It seems silly. But I'm going to throw you a bone on this. I'm going to be a homer here because I'm just desperately wanting the Panthers to get in the playoffs. So I'm going to go with that. 
That's my choice. Honestly, you could be right. I, I was a little bit torn either way, but you know what? Since you're going for the Panthers, I'm going to let you go for the Panthers. I'm going to go for the Stallions here. Um, again, it could be a close game. That's one thing that we've seen throughout the season. A majority of the games have been a one possession game at the end. Right. Yeah. And I see this. This could be more of the same, especially if the Panthers defense can hold it up, uh, you know, and keep the keep the stallions from kind of breaking loose. Anything's yeah. anything's yeah. your gamble now, uh, especially now that you have a kicker and a punter. Those things are less likely to go wrong for you. But, yeah, I think the, I think the stallions still pull it out. They got that home team advantage and they're back in their nightly spot on Saturday. So they should have a decent crowd out there backing them up. Um, but okay, cool. You know what? I'll take you. I, I'm not going to argue much too much on that. Moving to Sunday though, Maulers and breakers 12 Eastern on FS one. Call me crazy. Zach, call me insane. I don't know yet, but I might go Maulers two weeks in a row on this one. And here's why mm. here's why. Cons- not consistency, but they, they're building the uh, momentum. That's really what I'm trying to get here. One win can change a lot for a team. And more importantly, I think Vad Lee, we kind of talk about he's an inspiration for a lot of things, but I'm sure he's a flipping inspiration for that, for that locker room right now. Watch my language there. Then looking at the breakers, I mean, until Cly- Kyle Sloter is 100% healthy, it's, I think it's going to be a mixed bag out of them. And I, I, I'm no, no joke, no BS here. I'm, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say the Maulers take out the breakers. Okay. And then again, they are, they are a team to watch for then. We'll see. I could Man. be dead wrong. I could be so far wrong, but the breakers, I mean, if I, if I would say, if I looked at the Maulers last week versus the breakers last week, I'd say the Maulers probably win. Between the dedication out of the team, the motivation, uh, just the the Vad Lee coming in there, switching things up, them finally moving the ball like in a convincing way out there, I think it could happen. And what a surprise! What an upset that would be. Uh, I mean, it would it would be it would definitely put the Maulers in a completely different spot if this does pull it off. I don't. <laughs> I don't see it. I, I was going to go with the breakers either way. I, 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 I applaud you for do for being brave here with this. And maybe I'm wrong. Cause I can see, this is how I see the Maulers pull, pulling this mm-hmm. off. You know, look at what the generals did this past week. You know what they did? They were able to pound the rock and find running lanes with Darius Victor Trey and Trey Williams. They, I mean, they, they were able to get a solid out of Victor alone, five and a half yards of carry. That'll win you games. They'll get your first downs consistently every time. Um, guess who they have? Madre London, and then they also have Groshek behind yeah. center, both who are capable of doing great stuff on the ground if you can get them running lanes. Right, right. You know, I, I think there's your angle. You also have now Bailey Gathers. Last week was an X factor that allows Trey Walker to get open on the other mm-hmm. side. Trey Walker has excellent hands. Gaithers has excellent hands as well. And now you have, a, at least as long as Vadley wasn't just running off of, of coming off as a backup. Right. And with that energy, you have a QB that can deliver it and wants to push the ball downfield. Okay. Maybe there's a formula there. The generals kind of showed it last week what to do. Force turnovers, which Pittsburgh is, I mean, Pittsburgh's defense ain't too bad either. It's not. It's not it's not like at the level the Birmingham Stallions are, but it still can it can do damage. It can hold you close in games if needed. It's just that offense needed to pick up the slack. It finally might be able to. I see your path. Mm. However, I counter you with New Orleans goes hot and cold every other week. Right, right, right. This to me has got to be their hot their week where they go hot again. Um, I got the Breakers winning this by at least ten points. <sighs> Well, we'll see. And if I look, here's what you're going to do. If I lose, you're going to hold that audio clip, <laughs> post it on social, and I'm going to sit there and stew over it a little. <laughs> but that's okay. I got New Orleans winning this, though. Mauler's fans should feel a lot more confident this week, though. If you watch what the Generals did to them last week, there are there is a recipe for a win out of that with what Pittsburgh has on its arsenal. Final game of the week. The Houston Gamblers, they're much in the same position as my Panthers. They're taking on one of the top 
if not the number two team in the league right now in the New Jersey Generals. D- you, come back tour? I don't know. <laughs> Upset alert? I, I, I don't think Maybe. so this week, man. Um, no. <laughs> you know, half of me wants to do it for the memes and the lulls and all that stuff, but I just don't see it happening. Even if they come out strong, even if they go into the half with a two-possession lead, I won't put a point on that, but a two-possession lead, I see them losing. I just see them losing to the generals, which have, we were talking about earlier, they've established key players in each of these integral positions, right? They're not relying on one runner. They're not relying on one receiver. They're not even relying to a certain extent on one quarterback, right? And I think with that, with that type of team, the type of coaching, and it feels like coach Riley's really, I don't want to say making an impact on his players, but getting through to them in a way that I don't know if coach Sumlin is right. We've seen the plays that work for the gamblers work, but they're so limited and they're so few and far between that everything else is just very predictable. And I think coach Riley is there. I guarantee you they're looking at the film. Everybody's been looking at the film all season this year. And the generals are going to be no different going into this week, looking at the, at the gamblers and saying, this is what they're good at. This is what they fail at. Let's work on what they're good at first. And then also work on the pieces that they need to work on. And I don't know, even if I think the generals could run away with this one and make it, make it a pretty convincing win for them. But Hey, maybe I'm wrong because it could like you, you mentioned earlier, trap game, trap game, trap game. We're getting into trap game season. And this could be the one, my big trap game that I was looking forward to was the Maulers and the stallions. But I mean, if they win this week, I don't even know if it's a trap game anymore, but uh, we'll see. It depends if they lose this week, then maybe it still is. I don't see it happen though. I don't, I don't think the gamblers are pulling it out. And I think you agree with me here. No, here's what, here's what I think is going to happen because it seems like Houston does this every week. I'm just going to do it again. They're going to keep it close going into halftime. It's going to happen. They're going to, they're going to find some way to keep it close. New Jersey though. There are multiple ways that they can tear this apart. I see this very much. If it's going to come down to Houston coming close in the end, it'll become, it'll turn out the same way it was week four for the gamblers where they'll bend, but not break. It'll be a ton of yardage that the generals lay on these guys through the air or the ground. And then eventually New Jersey will pull away in the end. That, that's how I see it happening. I think for some reason, Kevin, someone has a great, does a great job doing a game plan to start, but he, but him and the company or Clayton Thorson or whoever you want to blame, they don't know how to consistently keep that game plan or adjust to it on the fly mm-hmm. is what's happening. I think New Jersey walks away with this. They're going to be five and one. They're just going to solidify more and more that they are the top Northern team. If not making a case for a number for the top team in the league, I'm, I think there's still two, but I mean, they clearly are head and shoulders above the rest of the division they are in right now. And, uh, and so yeah. I did the math. So if they win this week and all of the South loses out, then a win in week seven should secure the spot for them. Should. Yes. Because if you keep the, well, if you keep the buffer mm-hmm. I believe that's the case. I believe that's the if case. I, if I'm well, the I mean, it might not matter. It might not matter. We'll 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 know this week because I, I don't know. Those Maulers pull it out. We'll see. Makes that in there. But I, at this point, yeah, I, I find it very hard to believe that the generals don't make it in. But wouldn't that be the end of the season story if the Panthers and the Maulers make the playoffs? I mean, wouldn't uh, that my, be wouldn't that be my, the tale of all tales? Well, much like a Beach Boys song, wouldn't it be yes. nice? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, what, and honestly, think about the attendance on that one for the playoff. That would be, I could you the imagine? Generals fans would be super salty, but I think for the attendance on TV, you got you that is exactly what you want for a playoff game. And but it has yeah. to start now because the Generals are going to lock it in here soon, like soon, like they're going to be one of them. Probably in the next two weeks. It will. It, it will. They're, they're, I see it would have to be a complete and utter collapse, and I highly doubt it gets to that collapse. I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Week six is right around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. 
I want to thank you very much for tuning in. As always, again, be sure to follow us on social at USFL Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed the show. If you enjoyed any of our other content, click the bell as well. It builds morale for us and you as well. Uh, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Drop a review for us. We've been looking for a few more. If you like the show, we love to hear your feedback. Drop a review on Apple Podcasts if you are enjoying it on there, or Podcast Addict 2 if you happen to be a listener as well. And don't forget to mark your calendars. If you're going to the championship, we're going to be there for summer stock, ladies and gentlemen. Please, a two-day event for this one. Tour in the Hall of Fame, we're going to do July 2nd and July 3rd. We're going to do another four-hour or multi-hour, whichever one we decide on, broadcast live from Canton, Ohio, to discuss, talk, and celebrate the season, as well as spring football, really. I mean, that that's the main thing. It's, it's all about the love of football. And spring football Sign us up. to go with that, too. <laughs> For my partner in crime here in the ref, I am Zach Common saying so long to all of you. Thank you for the support. Thank you for all the comments and likes, the follows, watching our show, giving us, our, giving us what we need. You've been amazing. And until next episode next week, stay tuned, everybody.